Hey, what is going on everybody? Josh Whitley back today and happy pre-4th of July. Now I wanna go over a few things that are gonna help you take the best photos you can take with your DSLR, your mirrorless, or even your iPhone for tomorrow's fireworks show. I also just got back off of a run, so let's change into something a little better than this. Well, uh, there you go. All right, guys, so Thanks guys again for tuning in. Like I said before, we are definitely gonna go into the three things that I think are gonna help you guys take really good photos during the fireworks show tomorrow. So let's go ahead and get right into it. We're just gonna go into the settings. So you wanna set your the top knob of your camera and you wanna set that into the M for manual mode. Depending on whether you have a Canon, you shoot Nikon, I shoot Sony. So it's gonna have that M up there for a manual exposure and that's gonna give you full control over your aperture, your ISO, and your shutter speed. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your aperture is in between the ranges of F8 to F16. What that's gonna allow you to do is it's gonna allow you to get things from the foreground, things that are, um, fireworks that are closer to you, and fireworks that are like, you know, um, beyond that are going to be in focus. So that's gonna be a range that you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to and the second thing is I want you guys to make sure the camera is on manual focus. Or right, this is going to be a very important step because if you have your autofocus on while you're snapping the shot, the camera is going to try to focus on the thing that is closest to the sensor. So you don't want that to happen because the things in the background or the things in the foreground are going to be you know, out of focus and your shot's not gonna look as good as if it was in manual focus. So decrease your shutter speed all the way until it goes to bulb mode. And what bulb mode does is when you're holding the shutter button with your finger, you can hold that as long as you want so you can have complete control of how long your exposed image is going to be. And so that is gonna be a really important value. Basically, I found out that between two to six seconds, that's gonna give you the best time frame to take your shot with these new fireworks. So you wanna use the lowest ISO you could possibly have 100 to 200 if that is an option in your camera the reason is because you're going to be using bulb mode and that's going to allow a lot of light to go into your sensor and that's going to create the bright image in itself so that's you kind of want to just be around 100 to 200 I'll just put like a, like a little nice little diagram of the settings right here in the right corner of the screen so that way you guys can refer to them later like let's say you don't have a DSLR or mirrorless camera, you can even just use your phone. Those settings are basically going to be the same if you're using your phone. Go over there and keep holding the button, you know, and you can even stack these images in the, in Photoshop in an app that you can download off your phone if you have the Creative Cloud. So let's just go ahead and recap on that really quickly. You wanna have your aperture set between F8 and F16. You wanna have your shutter on bulb mode so that way you can have control over how long so you can expose your image, which is usually about two to six seconds. And then you wanna have the lowest ISO you can possibly have in your camera, which can be 100 or maybe even 200. Those are just the three things I think. Another quick tip just to kind of leave you guys on is going to be setting your white balance to daylight. The reason why you should set it to daylight 5600 Kelvin is because those lights are gonna be extremely bright. They're gonna give off a different type of lighting depending on whether they're red, blue, or green, just so that it stays consistent throughout the entire shot. And you don't have to worry about the camera recorrecting for that white balance. So yeah, thanks again guys for watching. Those are just a few tips that helped me personally take some really cool photos. And now you can take some really cool photos and show your friends and family that you know what you're doing during the 4th of July and you guys are the photographer. So thanks again guys for watching. This is Josh Willie, and I will see you guys in the next video which is going to be really cool because it's going to be about videography and it's going to be about a wedding that we're gonna be shooting. So yes, yeah, stay tuned for that. That'll be coming up in a couple of days. I'll see you guys, enjoy the 4th and be safe. Thank you, see you later.